gentlemen, welcome back to Fight Society Action. It is Christmas Vacation, December 15th, 2018. My name is Jim Alotta, being joined once again by my longtime close personal friend, Mr. Ken Cole. And Ken, we are going to round out 2018 in style tonight here in the Battlegrounds. Or you better watch your mouth, call me your friend. Yeah, we're back at the Battlegrounds, it's late. As he Chris knows, he opens the show. So for Helmsley, if he looks to maintain his spot, he'll have to be victorious here. Con conversely, Zach Thomas. Zach Thomas showing how stupid he is by trying to put a, hel a hand out to Helmsley. Thomas looking to move his way up in the rankings. Helmsley uh, knows that he's in there with a very aggressive, very dangerous young man. Helmsley tried to get the jump on things. And this McKees Ward crowd voicing how they feel about one classic Chris Helmsley. These people just hate that they're not classic Chris Helmsley. And Zach Thomas immediately hammering away. Aggression personified. Intensity personified. How about close fist? Finally, the ref says something. Referee, I don't hear you saying a word about Zach Thomas throwing that close fist. Referee Nick Davidson steps in. Helmsley exploiting the advantage. And is going to want to go to work on Zach Thomas. And we know Helmsley is as meticulous as they come inside those ring ropes. Step up in Zaguri, I believe, caught Helmsley on the ear. Thomas trying, not trying to bully Helmsley yeah. around. Thomas is manhandling Chris Helmsley. And there you see it. Zach Thomas hurling his body. Big mid-ring collision. And Helmsley doing the smart thing. Going to the outside. He needs to take a time out here, Jim. Zach Thomas using his body as a weapon. Hey, Thomas nice charges into the barricade. There is no chance that Zach Thomas will not take. Look out! Helmsley avoids the contact. Helmsley heard you there. And man, Helmsley is just being beaten to the punch here. Helmsley hits the guardrail. But Thomas does that time. That's how resourceful Chris Helmsley is. In fact, that may be Helmsley's most versatile weapon 
his resourcefulness and his mind, his ring generalship that he brings to the table. High IQ on the side of Chris, ring IQ on the side of Chris Helms. Normally when, when you do when a guy gives a guy a hot shot, they, they bounce off the ropes. There was no bounce when you hit the, hit the lumber on the outside of the ring here. Yeah, certainly those barricades are made of solid wood. There was extra impact on that hot shot, Jim. No doubt about it. Classic now taking over. And this is the pace that Helmsley wants to employ. Helmsley wants to methodically and meticulously pick apart at Zach Thomas. Helmsley wants to prove why he's number one. Why he's ranked number one with the fight society for the title. Well, clearly he's ranked number four. You know that as well as I do. You haven't been away that long. Well, you've been under telling you he's ranked number four. I want to see you do that. And this is a vicious side of Chris Helmsley right here. Helmsley coming in, and make no mistake about it, Chris Helmsley won't think twice about fish hooking an eye or breaking an arm to get an advantage. Helmsley with another shot. Tom is able to reverse. Textbook, beautifully done. And that was close, Jim. And hate him or hate him, you must give Helmsley credit. The man is durable. We've seen him in some absolute wars inside this building. And you're, you see smart thing, you're going to part of Helmsley, grabbing a tights and pull a Thomas in on a turnbuckle there. Yeah, leverage mover, again, going back to the resourcefulness to use the leverage there and create an opening here against Thomas. Hooks him up. Dynamite kid style snap suplex. Of course, a rest in peace to the late Dynamite Kid. A true pioneer in the wrestling business. Helmsley and Rue Chinlock. And again, back to the strategy. Helmsley going to very methodically wear Thomas down. It's not flashy, but it's damn sure effective. Thomas is fighting his way back up, Jim. Yeah, works his way back up to a vertical base. And again, I'm gonna go back to the ring IQ of Chris Helmsley. Knew exactly when to cut Thomas off. That's learning under, under the learning tree of Dean Radford, Jim. No doubt. Now this I disagree with. Helmsley should not be playing in the crowd right now. He needs to stay on top of Thomas. Yeah, giving Zach Thomas several seconds to recover here. But man, he buried that shot right between the shoulder blades of Zach Thomas. Who really came into his own here in 2018. You heard that shot. See the head snap back of Zach Thomas upon impact there. Helmsley with a big splash. Helmsley uh, looks like he dropped about 15, 20 pounds in preparation for this matchup. Beautiful blockbuster off the ropes from Thomas. A dynamic young athlete is Zach Thomas. This is both guys starting to stir here, Jim. Pivotal point in this contest. The first man to defeat will have a definitive advantage here. Thomas charges! Big ring collision. And another. Thomas getting an extra momentum by kicking off the turnbuckle. And Helmsley collapses in the corner. Cannonball. <laughs> Helmsley out at two. Helmsley escapes. And he is seeking the safety of the ropes here. But there may, there may be no reprieve, no surcease from the attack of the man at war. Tom 
mom was looking to bring home for in. Falcon arrow beautifully done. Again, I can't believe it. Get Helmsley out of it. Nobody kicks out of a Falcon arrow. But Helmsley just did. I'm telling you, this guy can, can take some punishment. Tom is back to his feet first. You can see Helmsley starting to feel it. Helmsley's on Dream Street, shot right between the shoulder blades. And that's that mean streak I was talking about. Dug right into the eyes. Helmsley made look for the pedigree. And Thomas got planted. And that's it. Could be academic from and he got him. is proving his case for a championship shot each and every time he steps foot in the squared circle. Patrick Hayes, nearly one year as Fight Society champion. The Keysport, Pennsylvania, are you ready to party?
this holiday season, Paul is looking as uh, cheery as ever. Jim, I know you were fat Troy Lords is in the building tonight because I made sure of it. Because I told you you were going to get it tonight. And for that, I heard you out here talking about Christmas. And as I get older, I might get a little fatter. I've never been jolly, but I'm going to give you a gift tonight. Tonight, the Fight Society Championship, Patrick Hayes, Troy Lords, last man standing. Buster. My gift to you, sir. Paul Atlas, thank you so much because I know for a fact that tonight we're going to leave Troy Lords hazed and confused. The main event of Christmas vacation, Troy Wards challenges Patrick Hayes. Fight Society Championship, last man standing. No. 
That's gonna be a can have a hairspray just get his hair like that. Um. And uh, Lucio is so incensed that this crowd is getting behind him. His hair is standing on it. Thorn yeah. over child. And speaking of that hairstyle, Alexander having some fun at Wuchio's expansion. Wuchio is an unknown commodity here in the fight society. He showed up and he wanted to fight. He has an opportunity. Now you better make the most of it, Jack, because uh, if you come in here in the fight society and you lay an egg, you're out of here. So Wuchio DeVeers has an opportunity here. He better make the most of it. And he's certainly in there with a young man looking to build his resume inside the Fight Society in A.J. Alexander. AJ. I would like to see him come out of winning this game. Yeah, here it goes. Well, you know how I feel about A.J. And there's Alexander. Small joint manipulation. But I believe that Lucia just took a bite out of uh, A.J. Let's go with a reversal. Back kick. Oh! That could have been bad. German drops Lucio DeVeers right on the back of his head. AJ, this time he'll been able to take himself and hit a German suplex out of it. Absolutely high risk maneuver. AJ Alexander's a very confident young man. He wants to take those chances. And he paid for it right there. Just as you were saying about taking chances, he, he took a chance and paid for it. Oh. And AJ may cost himself here. Maybe AJ Alexander is a little overconfident, a little too confident. Well, like you said, there isn't much to know about Lucio. Maybe AJ going in here, maybe he's overlooking Lucio. And his confidence was at an all-time high. Now he's paying for it. Lucio DeVeers is a guy that has nothing. Nice overhead throw. Hooks the leg here, shoulders down. Lucio DeVeers looks like somebody that has nothing to lose in life or in wrestling, so that makes him dangerous. Or hairstyle. I mean, when you look like that, your options in life have to be limited. So the success in the uh, wrestling business is Lucio's uh, priority, and he's gonna lay it all on the line here. And Lucio using that rope for leverage, just draping AJ across that second rope. This guy looks like a nasty individual. A real rough house is Lucio DeVeers. Referee with George with a two count. God bless referee George. And from that miscue from AJ, the tide of this matchup has completely turned. He's in a bad way here. He has to stay on if he wants to be AJ. His hair is wilting. <laughs> <laughs> to your point, he wasted time and he's paying for it. AJ trying to rally back here. AJ uh, runs into a boot. Alexander's ranked at number nine. Oh, man! Exploder in the corner. Got a point away from Rose. Yeah, ring positioning will be pivotal here. Lucy able to pull out a two count again. As I was saying before he got dropped on his head. Again, he's taking his attention off AJ. AJ ranked at number nine. You know, if he loses this matchup to an unranked competitor, he's going to fall outside of the top 10. Sidewalk slam. He proud of himself with that one, Jim. Did you see the look on his face? He was proud of himself. 
Ken, what do you think goes wrong in someone's life if they end up looking like Lucio DeVere's? <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you're down that far, all you do is hope things go up. I can't, I can't. Stan Hansen style Lariat and Lucio may make the most of this opportunity. Alexander just barely escapes. Lucio, stay on AJ. Thank you very much. Anybody else? AJ catches the arm into a Fujiwara, and he is wrenching, twisting on that wrist. Lucio not wanting to give it up here. <laughs> Looks like AJ has been doing some tape study. Breaker across the knee, nicely done. Who watches tapes nowadays? I still watch tapes. You own a VCR? Yes. But when you're not watching tapes, you should watch uh, the Pro Wrestling Network, of course, in IndieWrestling.us. There you go. And Sidekick Media. And speaking of kicks, I think. Alexander's gonna look to kick Lucio DeVere's right in the face. Schoolboy. And there's that super kick. <laughs> Lucio out at two. You know, don't sell AJ Alexander short. He's in his formative, his formative years of wrestling. He's just a young buck in the biz, but he's gonna make the most of it. And a drunk kicked a cone. Lucio in the corner, huh? I forgot his name, Jim. Wow. It's a hell of a matchup here. A very physical, competitive contest. And that is exactly what Fight Society gives you each and every time out. Uh, Jim, it looks like you set him up. He may flatten that hair on his head. Lucio out the back door. And Lucio just drives Alexander down to the canvas. Finds two and a half. And Alexander is all out of sorts. And you know what, we gotta give Lucio credit. The guy looks like a goofball, but he's he's a fighter, man. I mean, he is competitive here against one of Flight Society's brightest young stars. Death Valley driver. No way, Lucio gonna, he, oh no, he inches away is Lucio DeVere. You know what, man, if he'd hooked the leg, man, he might've had that win. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. And Lucio DeVere's is proving something here, Ken. He is hanging step for step in the Fight Society. There's a Samoan headbutt right to the sternum. And he just snapped the finger, why not? A look out. He's got DeVere's up. Neck breaker variation. And he got it. in a physical fight. But Dean Radford is out here. The last Pro Wrestling Express heavyweight champion, Dean Radford. I know you walk around here with a chip on your shoulder like nobody pays attention to what you're doing out here. Correct. I don't know if you pay attention. That was a good match you had right there. 
Someone to risk a beating from Bill Collier? 
Well, come on, you hit him with a chair or something, that ain't gonna take much. Strider up. Strider's calling for help. I think Timothy Titan may uh, need to increase that bounty. I don't know if even that solid 200 big ones, 200, two Benjamins, I don't know if that's gonna get it done. I don't know if anybody wants to risk the physical uh, harm that Bill Collier dishes out inside the squared circle. Just push Tim across the ring. Raw, unfiltered power. 500. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. You still need 500 or something, Jim? TKD may need that 500 to get its teeth realigned. Although if that were the case, PJ Parker would get involved in this thing. I'm seriously thinking about telling Jesse to hit my music. I'm grabbing a chair and getting that $500. The bounty is up to $500. Uh, now they're making it hard to say no. Right, buddy, hard number two, the kickflip kid, Ryder Reed. Well, he might not be able to look right after that clothesline. I don't know. The bounty at six hundred dollars. Bill Collier is just weighing to waste everybody, but he's one man. Now you knew the numbers game was gonna catch up sooner or later, Jim. The numbers game, as you said, may be too much even for Bill Collier. Look we'll at Titan playing cheerleader. Tim and Platt in the Lewis movement, kick and run. Let the other two beat him up. It's three on one, and this is ridiculous. A payoff. Bill Carter getting a beat down he deserves. Who the hell is that? Buddy Holly number three, Chief Thunder Bear. Chief Thunder Bear. The body is $750. He's taking longer to get in the ring. The body is now Stone here. That's it's a gang fight out here. Why not? And he's out there with the lovely lady on the outside. Lucio, the chief out here. Ryder Reed. TK. is getting absolutely mugged. All right, this is gonna be it. The light drop, here it is. One, two. Oh, I thought that was it, Jim. They kicked out of the light drop. Nobody kicks out of the light drop, Jim.
this is ridiculous. Bill Collier being mugged. As impressive as Bill Collier is, it's this be one of five on one out, one out here. Five on one. This is ridiculous. This is a sham. Oh, come on, look at Bill Collier. He's the size of five guys. This is damn ridiculous. That's what this is a setup. Carter's starting to come back on. Now look out. Titans dropped on the back of his head. He just got thrown at the foot of the chief. Lucio dropped on his neck. What athleticism! It's not a fair fight. We need some more guys out here. You can't hit Strider. You can't hit Strider. I'll hear you. Wait a minute, Mae Buckley, she's in the ring. She's a man. And she's not backing down. Hey, go look at the guns on her. She's she a former she's a former power lifter. And Mae Buckley is she's not Thanks for coming, Timothy Titan, but Mae Buckley. But I mean, what she, she just grabbed something out of her uh, her gear there. I don't know what she has. Oh, it's powder. There's powder all over the place. Codebreaker. Collier is blind. Are you kidding me? Here we go. Are you good? Damn it! You gotta be kidding me. Oh, 
impression each and every time he steps inside the battlegrounds. Last month, Zeke Mercer put up a hell of a fight against the Fight Society champion Patrick Hayes, and he proved a lot. Zeke Mercer has the heart and the potential to step up to the plate. And he will look to prove himself here against Thomas Mathis. Mathis ranked number 18, Zeke Mercer at, at number 11. Of course, this event, Christmas Vacation, December 15, 2018, coming to you here on the PWN Network through Indie Wrestling. US in association with Sidekick Media. Of course, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Fight Society PGH for up-to-date news about everything coming up here in 2019 on the Fight Society. Just get all the folks in there. And of course, my name is Jim Amata. Un Unfortunately, I'm next to Ken Cole. Unfortunately. Calling up a tie-up. Waist lock here from Mathis. He will use his size and strength advantage against Mercer here, but Mercer's gonna have to use that agility and technique. Switch is very nicely done, of course. Mercer had a uh, high school wrestling amateur background, and that's what we're seeing here. He's looking to shoot the half and get those shoulders down. Hey, George, those shoulders were down. Yeah, but Mathis, Mathis is tall as he is. Yeah, using that reach. Yeah, he didn't have far to reach for the ropes. And I believe Mathis looking a little flustered, a little confused that he was out-techniqued by one Zeke Mercer. And Mathis is ready to reset and try this again. I don't know if a test of strength is uh, wise for Zeke Mercer. And Zeke, being the rising rookie he is, made a rookie mistake there, got preoccupied with the crowd. And not paying attention and to And Mathis him. made him pay for it. Mathis puts on that side headwalk where again he's going to use that height advantage for added leverage. Mercer looking to fight out here. Back heel trip, nicely done. Slapping on a side headwalk of his own again. Mercer using that technique. Taking Mathis down to the canvas, looks to neutralize that side's advantage. And Ken, let me ask you, if you're Thomas Mathis, a young man is really still trying to find his footing here inside the Fight Society, what's his best strategy when you're going up against someone that has a lot of momentum behind him in Zeke Mercer? Well, you gotta do your you gotta do your homework for one thing, Jim. And no, if you know, notice Zeke, Zeke's more of a high flyer, quick. He's quick. So what you basically gotta do is you gotta ground him. You gotta ground him. You gotta take his feet off from underneath him. To your point, that's what he's doing right here. That's right. Use your size, use your momentum, and lay on him. You'll tire him out. And Mercer here, looking looking for a way to keep himself off of the canvas. Mercer trying to fight his way out. Backs Mathis in, shoots him off. And there was a size difference there. Too much power by the absolute. Up and over, almost gets tripped. Shoots Zeke in. Beautiful step up, Hurricane Rana. Deep arm drag. Two feet firmly in the chest, and that's the momentum that Zeke Mercer thrives on right there. I mean, if we're looking at these two guys, Jim, Mathis has an experience edge. I mean, six in his first year, Mathis has been on, I can't even remember, like two years now, maybe three? Uh, he's nearly a two year pro, correct. Mercer charges, and the absolute cut him off. And that's experience coming into play here, Jim. Yeah, certainly Mathis has uh, done some wrestling around the Pittsburgh area. But he's really looking to assert himself here in the Fight Society. Really looking to make his footprint on the Pittsburgh wrestling world. 
inside the battlegrounds. Now, unlike Mathis or not, Mathis is doing everything right right now. He's wearing, he's wearing Zeke down. Buries the knee into the bread basket. Hooks the leg, sloppy cover there. You know, and this is where the arrogance of Thomas Mathis could come back to bite him. Yep. I mean, we talked about it. Zeke Marcer, this kid brings a lot of heart to the table. He reminds me a lot of Ricky Morton, to tell you the truth. That, that guy that just keeps fighting and fighting and fighting. And the Ricky Morton-esque fight of Zeke Mercer may come back to bite Thomas Mathis. Five minutes gone, five minutes. And uh, Ken, even though you were dealing with some health issues, you weren't here in person, you saw that matchup that Mercer had with Hayes through our partners at IndieWrestling.us. Man, what a maneuver from Mathis here. Lateral press. Mercer kicks out. One second, Jim. Uh, well, as I, I was gonna, gonna point out here, that you saw that matchup between Zeke and Hayes. What does it say for someone like Zeke Mercer in his rookie year of wrestling to really take the champion to his limit? Zeke's a future star, that's what that says. Again, a sloppy cover. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to criticize Mathis. It may be a sloppy cover, but you gotta like what he's doing. Every time Mathis has a power move, Mathis goes for a pin. And that's wearing Mercer down more and more every time he does it. Absolutely forcing Mercer to extricate the weight to escape here. What agility. From the mat to the top row, Jim. That's pretty impressive. Drops the axe handle. Watch your man stop playing axe handle. And now this is where Mathis is going to look to ground Zeke Mercer, box him into the corner. Not allow Mercer any room to generate momentum. Yeah, he's he's got to stay on top of him. That's that fight I was talking about. Mercer's not going to give in. He's not going to give up. Fighting spirit, Jim. Fighting spirit. Beautiful missile drop kick. Two feet firmly in the chest. Hooks the leg. Two and a half. Mathis, Mathis, yeah, Mathis. Mathis able to roll the shoulder at the last second, huh? Getting tongue tied. With as fast as this matchup has been going, I don't blame you. Go behind for Mercer. Big knockdown. And he's he's rallying here. He's really feeling it. He's got the speed going. Zeke needs to be pounding his opponent on the mat here, Jim. Mercer zeroing in. Taking a chance. And Mathis caught him. Blue Thunder Bomb. Mercer took a chance and it could backfire. That's it. That's all it takes. One slip. Thomas Mathis just pinned the number 11th ranked contender. So certainly Thomas Mathis could be moving his way up the rankings. Could 2019 be the year of the absolute? Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com.